what is up season of discovery phase three has been out for three weeks now and we're going to take a look at who is doing the most damage in the raid we're also going to take a look and see if there's any news about class balancing so stay tuned to the end of the video rankings we're going to click on rankings here in sunken temple actually we're going to hold off on the rankings let's go to uh to the stats first and take a look at the overall stats as you can see uh the warrior dot uh has moved up just slightly past the hunter dot which we've been predicting over the past uh this this is a range of two weeks this is all percentiles um, if you change this down to a range of a day, you're going to see uh, that the Warriors are still up here competing. But the Hunters is overall just the easiest class to play in the raid. So they tend to have the most damage for uh, this is, you know, all percentiles for everyone. If you change it to 95th, you'll see that Warriors start to get closer to the Hunters. But once again, the melee Hunters just seem to outshine the vast majority of the player race right now. And then if we go to max percentile, it should be no contest. The Warriors should just be in a complete league of their own at the max percentile. This are, these are Warriors that have, you know, all the buffs in their group. They've got, of course, Wind Fury. They've got uh, True Shot Aura. And they have, uh, they have to have Wild Strikes from a Druid. And then they maybe have like a Rogue to put a debuff as well as a Warlock in there to put a Curse of Wreck on the targets. Um, and then they have the entire raid kind of working towards for them in order to, for them to uh to do a lot of damage and probably faster kill times would work better as well so in the max percentile warriors are clearly the kings of the game again um it's just that warriors are very very good in the 100th percentile but below that if they're not like fully geared fully world buffed all the consumes best in slot items like warrior scales really really well like at the very top but they're kind of mid if they don't have everything in their favor. Um, and it's because they scale so well at a certain point. Like once they get around 40% crit, Warrior just becomes insane. Um, uh, but before that, they're kind of below hunters to be on to be honest. So it, even though Warrior looks really strong, I mean, if you just take, if you look at the 95th percentile, yeah, Hunters are still going to outblast them. And then if you go down, like, if you go down here, you know, Warriors actually get kind of mid if they're not being played perfectly. Um, but if you have really, a really good player and a good raid behind a Warrior, then yes, they can, they can carry the raid. So I think that recently there was a post on Wowhead and Josh Greenfield addressed how warriors are scaling with rage and because that rails uh sorry rage scales off off of crit it makes it very difficult to balance the class because once they have all the buffs they become like this unstoppable killing machine and nothing can catch them and so the way that rage interacts with crit might need a slight nerf or change but change just means nerf right because they're on top anybody who's getting a change that's on top is getting nerfed um, and that's just kind of how that works so as you can see uh range hunter is actually underperforming fire mages and warlocks in the max percentile and in and, and the max percentile they're getting the help of pi with you know a perfect raid comp uh you know boomkin curse of elements maybe a frost mage in their group to empower the bolts and they're getting pi from from a priest and so these guys might be able to out dps a ranged hunter whereas if you go to the 95th percentile the ranged hunters on average will will be out dpsing the mages in the locks so expecting anyone to play in the max percentile is a little unrealistic the average player uh can only do about the 95th percentile at best um if they're not getting pis and the group catered to them and, and such so this is why we always look at the 95th percentile um casters need a little bit of help Overall, still, DPS Priest is struggling. Balanced Druid is struggling. Ellie Shaman is struggling a bit here. I'd like to see uh, some changes to these classes. Now, Agrin did take to Twitter and ask for feedback recently. I left a nice comment about mages, about mages' uh, single target needing to be... single tar uh, One, uh, sorry, one button rotations are fine, but um, I do feel like class design-wise... Most of our classes would feel better to play if they were several button rotation. And if you do the rotation optimally, it would net you more damage uh, than a, just a single button rotation. 
And hopefully we are getting some reworks and things like that to come. Uh, just from what we've been seeing, they're actually asking the community for feedback now, and hopefully they'll take action on our feedback and we'll get some changes and some news here soon on class development. But one of the things that Agrin did say is that um, class balancing is more than a uh, Warcraft log chart. So we can't base everything on a class being good or bad off of this because DPS priests provide vamp embrace is kind of like what they're saying. You can't basically what 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 Agrid is saying is that utility equals a DPS loss. Like you you need to have a DPS loss if you offer utility to a raid. And I'm not 100% sure if that feels good to you or not. Um but that just tells me hey don't play a utility class if you want to pump. And so I'm not sure that if that's fair either. I would like to have them all at least a little bit closer than this at the end of the day. And that would that would make me feel a little bit better. So let's get into picking apart a few logs here and see who's doing the craziest stuff. Um, okay, we still have a Londo, uh, almost 200 DPS over the next highest warrior. And we should see a lot of warriors on the front page. I mean, it's just a melee show this tier. The, the entire first two, three, four, five pages is probably just all melee. Um, let's see if we have any casters or range hunters who have been able to make it onto the top three pages mm. i don't see no that's the top 300 in the world overall and there's no ranged classes uh top 400 in the world no range classes it's actually getting worse we did have a mage who was in the top 300 world last week and this week they are nowhere to be found guys not even in the top 500 world wait what no way no way okay top 600 top 600 world can we get one mage can we get no top 700 world can we get one mage there's a prop pally blizzard there's a prop pally in the top 600 world but no mage we have okay we do have a couple of marksman hunters this is the first range player in the world and he's ranked 615. this is crazy wait is range really down this bad taco our first caster is ranked 718 in the world. Boys. Okay. The, right next to a gladiator warrior. Even the tanks are out DPSing the casters. Delano. There he is. The mage. Top mage in the world. 1213 uh, DPS. Ranked 748. The first mage. And the first... um. Warlock are on page seven. 718 is our first caster in the world. That is absolutely insane. And this guy is getting PI. He probably has every buff in the entire raid, uh, and optimal gear and rotation, everything. And he's uh he's not anywhere near competing with probably an average hunter, which is absolutely insane. Uh hopefully, hopefully we get some of these some changes soon, some balances, uh, because season of, of discovery is just gonna be a melee show and everyone will just start re-rolling, kind of like what I did already. I already I've already let go of my mage and started re-rolling warrior. Uh, because I just know it's not gonna get better at 60. Uh, unless unless uh Agrin could change my mind. That's it, it is what it is right now. All right, let's go to the front page. Let's see what kind of what kind of numbers uh these warriors are putting up on let's check out more fast more fast should be the highest dps because it's a damage amp and there it is right there alondo is putting up 4400 dps on the more fast fight what an insane amount of damage right there wow um and let's take a look at what he's doing to achieve this dps uh is this the wrong log Damage done uh, to Animated Flame and Nightmare Vine is excluded and damage done to Morphaz Mor has been normalized. Got you. 
All right. So these numbers that are on the front page are not uh, not reflective of what damage he actually did. So he so 2.1k is actually um the top damage in the world right now and all the morphaz damage has been has been normalized. And that's what's going on here. Uh and if you want to view unverified damage, you can change it to this and then you'll see the 4.4k DPS that he did probably on the uh details damage meter more likely. All right, so we have a uh, slam execute whirlwind heroic strike queuing slam on on um on prox using sapper dragon's breath chili. So this is very very uh simple rotation. You can basically just queue heroic strike and whirlwind on cooldown and then slam whenever it's up and that's pretty much it and then execute in the execute window. Very simple rotation. He's got fury visor um, running taste for blood, which you don't actually use at all. So warrior actually has a wasted head slot rune, similar to other classes, which I would like to see at least some kind of utility option on the head slot, because a lot of classes right now are not getting a head slot rune like deep freeze for mages, taste of blood for warriors, etc. And I would really love to see every slot have something useful, like for every spec. And if you throw a utility option in there, then at least you can use that for every spec. And if it adds survivability or defense, it doesn't have to give you a power, a power creep for every slot. So let's hopefully that they, hopefully the devs start to look at those runes that people are, rune slots people aren't using and they start um, adding, adding some uh, class design in there. Uh, we're using the Nomragon neck here still. He is blacksmithing with engineering and he's running the hyperconductive gold wraps for the 3% cr uh, critical strike chance on usage of course three piece with the void bracers running seven strength enchant on those wild band of the wild gods blackstone ring diamond flask with the breath of the beast and the black veil cape thrash blade with the snake cobbler now this is interesting he's using this mace in the offhand with a 2.3 speed just running four weapon damage on both instead of 15 agi so i mean there you go top damage in the world and he's just he's not using anything special he's actually using just blue weapons with the extra chance on hit from thrash blade so thrash blade in the main hand still proving to be king right now in this raid and i have a feeling thrash blade will be quite good for a long time and i, I am curious to see if alondo actually swaps over to use the double fist weapons with the uh with the proc chance on use if those were to drop for him in the raid so we'll keep an eye on that and let's see what like a couple of other warriors are doing now uh dookie is also running thrash blade with the fist weapon offhand i'm not actually sure if if this is going to show if he's using uh the 1.5 speed fist weapon or if he's traded it in for the slower one but right here it does say that it's using the 1.5 uh so Maybe he's liking the faster offhand weapon to generate more crits, to generate more rage. If he is feeling a bit rage starved, but I know some people have opted to swap the offhand weapon in for the faster one, uh, for the slower, for the slower one. So if you prefer a slower offhand weapon, you can actually get that from the island. So Thrash Blade main hand is still king with the Serpent Striker offhand, or maybe just anything good in the offhand um, for warriors right now. And it does look like everyone's kind of using a, a very similar. And you can see Sting of the Serpent, this offhand weapon, providing almost a 1,000 uh, damage on the boss for a 16 DPS increase for him. He is spamming hamstrings whenever he's he's capped on Rage as well. Uh, that's one thing I did forget to mention from Alondo's rotation, is if you do um, get capped on Rage, you do want a hamstring to just get yourself off of 100 uh, and hope for a, a crit with your hamstrings. So it's about a four-button rotation uh, queuing heroic strike heroic strike and whirlwind on cooldown with hamstring if you're at 100 um, rage and then uh, execute in the execute window slam on prox so maybe a four or five button rotation actually which is which is more than the majority of the classes in season of discovery i feel like the warrior uh, dps rotation is in a good spot right now he's also using hyperconductive gold wraps the helmet from nomragon uh the crafted helmet blacksmithing helmet from nomragon and he's also using um, the blacksmithing shoulders with with the ng uh, wrists. Uh, vice grips from ZF, interesting choice. Everyone's using the diamond flask right now, and absolutely love that they gave the three that you get all the choices from your class quest now instead of being forced to choose, which never never felt good. And a lot of people forgot to pick diamond flask, and it was a big big ordeal. And so 
they'd have to literally re-roll another level 50 warrior just to get diamond blast. So I absolutely love that change for in season of discovery. Um, should we take a look at the seventh page and see what some of the casters are doing to be rank seven? Let's filter it here by, um, I think the number one warlock in the world is taco. He's doing 1200 damage. Let's get a look for warlocks. Uh, they're still running chaos bull incinerate. The imps are doing a lot more damage now. Wow. The imp is doing 18% of his damage here. And I believe imps got a buff to their mana regeneration recently. And so that makes sense why my, uh, a warlock is now out DPSing uh, the mages with the recent change to how fast the imps can regenerate their mana, which would allow their pets to do more damage. Uh, so it looks like, yeah, the standard incinerate chaos bolt uh, immolate with conflagrate now being into the damage rotation, which was new from P1 and P2. You did not use conflagrate in your rotations. Okay, so if you want to compete now, you need to use the imp uh, with conflagrate uh, into your rotation in order to be competitive uh, for caster DPS. Okay. Well, there we have it. We'll we'll end it. We'll end the video here, boys. Um, that's a good look at some of, of what some of the top damage dealers are doing in the raid right now. Stay tuned for next week, and we'll take a look at what um, Agron and the developers are saying about class balance. Hopefully, we get some changes by next week, and we can see some casters and some uh, like range hunters start to come back into the mix and make it more exciting. If you like this content, please uh, subscribe to the channel and check me out on Twitch.tv/Sardaco. I'll see you next time.